In spite of being put in the buckiest of circumstances, you come forth as pure gold. Because the pressure that was meant to kill you will not kill you in the name of Jesus. But just as how a rare diamond is molded in the bowels of the earth under extreme intense pressure and heat, that is what will happen with your case as well. The intense pressure and heat and the darkness and the obscurity is what is going to allow you to come forth as a rare diamond. The rare, valuable, in fact, priceless gem, diamond that the Lord has called you to be. Praise God. So we should never look at sexual assaults in a cavalier attitude like, oh, just deal with it. No, these are things that need to be dealt with. Be that you are not hiding it or brushing it under the carpets, but you are bringing it to the fore who needs to get prosecuted. Get prosecuted, whether or not they're in the church, outside the church, or whatever levels in the church, or regardless of what kind of family you have, whether lower class, upper class, middle class, stratosphere class, middle door, Make sure that all of these sexual assaults are being reported and are being prosecuted regardless of who it is. Don't right. ever, if you have multiple children, put down the ones who don't do well academically because everybody is seeing the A's, the grade ones, the whatevers and all of those things of your more academically inclined child. Don't put down any child. Make sure that you're not going to diss the person who is doing well academically. No, you're going to encourage them and let them continue in that area. But also don't neglect the ones who aren't the scholars because God has a purpose on their life. They can still come out and excel. In some cases, even higher the one them who did have all an education. Yo, provide the conditions for them to bloom, for them to blossom, for them to grow and manifest and become who Christ has called them to be. Welcome back to my channel, Soul Papa Christ. Thank you so much for being here this week. Praise God. But before we go any further, let's pray. Almighty Jesus Christ, we worship you. We magnify you. Lord, you're just awesome. Awesome. You're beyond what any words can express. Lord Jesus, I pray, dear God, that you will even receive, Lord Jesus Christ, our thanksgiving of worship, our thanksgiving of praises unto you in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just thank you, we praise you, we worship you for being God in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray dear God that you'll even take control of this recording, take control of everything that will be shared here this day in the name of Jesus. Father God, let everything be said and done to your glory, to your honor, and in the way that you want it to be in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray that you bless everyone who will watch this message. I pray, dear God, that even your words that you have given me, Lord Jesus Christ, will go forth in the name of Jesus and even germinate in the souls of these persons, Almighty God, to your glory in the name of Jesus, for the furtherance of your kingdom's mission in the earth, for their good and for the good of persons connected to them in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, what we feel of asking you this day, Grant it unto us now, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So, this week, this week, we are discussing the importance of knowing who's in your house. And knowing who's in your house in terms of your children. Even if it's not your biological children, the children that you are taking care of. Knowing who's in your house. Uh, so that you are able to safeguard their destinies so that they can become who God has sent them to this earth to be. Now, I know in the land of YouTube and many other arenas, for persons to speak on certain topics, it is expected that you should have some experience in the area, what's your clout and all of that. So, you know, the Lord moves in mysterious ways because... Last week's message, I was thinking when the Lord gave me the topic that I would be speaking from the perspective of me being a female and all of that and single and all of these things. But then, you know, 
the editing of that video, I realized that the Lord had his way and what came out was more along the lines of family, more along the lines of children, uh, safeguarding them and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, hmm. And then this week, you know, I thought that was it, right? And then this week's message, the Lord said, no, I'll continue the discussion, but focus on children. So, you know, we look for Jesus and we say, God, you realize I'm not married yet, no. I realize I'm gonna have no children. I'm gonna have, as we say, Jamaica, not even one. One. Look at the get again. Pick me. Yeah? So, God, why you keep on giving me a topic, yeah? But, this, <sighs> listen, I have learned to just go with what the Lord tells me to do, and He will have His way. So, if you're looking at it and you're saying, well, I'm not going to listen to this girl because she's not married, she don't have no children, all of that. You're yeah, going to be so power the Lord who I share with you. So, if God could speak through a donkey, he can speak through me to you. So, do not disregard the avenue through which God chooses to bring the message. Alright? Amen. Good. So, now we are going to continue this discussion about child safety, but most especially being able to discern who exactly you have in your home. Who is your child meant to become? What is the mandate of God upon this child's life? And also, what you need to do and how you need to behave in relation to this child so that this child can become the glorious child that Jesus has designated him or her to be. Praise God. So how we're going to proceed with this discussion because again, this is another discussion slash story time format. You know, that's just what the Lord wants me to do with this message. So what we're going to do is to look at some key characters in the Bible and then of course link that back to the whole idea or the whole topic of knowing who's in your house so that you can nurture these children into who God has called them to be, as well as based on these stories, these cautionary tales, what we should not do, both from the perspective of parents and the perspective of children or young adults. All right, so the first story is that of Samson. And we know Samson, the strong man, the mighty man. Well, this is a case where the Lord reveals who he was intended to be. His parents received it. They, on their part, did everything that they could to ensure that the purpose of God would come forth in his life. But Samson himself did not respect the revelation of God upon his life. And he went off kilter and he was destroyed before his time. So Samson's father, Manoah, he and his wife, they received from the angel of the Lord certain strict instructions about how Samson should behave. How Samson's diet should be and how he should keep himself. He was meant to be a Nazarene. No razor was supposed to go upon his head. That's where his strength lied in his lodges. Of you course, know, the last thing you would expect would be for him to be trying to have relationship with women of the Edwi tribe because he's supposed to fight against the Philistines to ensure that Israel would remain free. So his parents did all of these things and they obeyed the Lord. But Samson did not feel that all of these restrictions were necessary. And sometimes when you have adulted men and women of God and they're coming into their own as adults, then the enemy knows how to set the traps for them so that he seeks to pull them out of their purpose. Because especially when you start walking in your purpose from an early age, the enemy tries to set up these roadblocks to knock you off kilter, to keep you completely walking opposite to what God has called you to be and do. And then the ultimate thing is that you don't necessarily get the chance to do something bad and come back again because the bad date of God upon your life is so great, it's so powerful. He seeks to knock you out like straight away because that's what the Philistines were doing. They saw that Samson had an affinity towards their women, which in the Israelite context would be strange women. These were women who were not worshipping the true God. These were completely alien, foreign, even satanic women. But these were the women that Samson was attracted to. And of course, the enemy used that Delilah 
to get at the source of his secret, get at the source of what made him unique and destroyed it. And we need to ensure that it's not just a matter that as parents and as guardians that you know the word of God and what God has called the child to be and you're living the Christian life, you're living it out right and pure and righteous and holy, but you need to ensure that you're putting in them the love for the things of God, that you're sure that you're emphasizing to them the importance of them having their own relationship with Jesus Christ, their own connection with him. It's not going through you. You need to ensure that they are connected to Jesus Christ to themselves, that they know Jesus Christ to themselves. Because when you're no longer there, it is your training that you put in them from when they were young and growing up. That is what is going to manifest. Now it may be that Samson's parents tried to train him. However, in the whole scheme of things, when he's this mighty strong man in Israel and everybody's going like, oh, Samson, you know, the fear got to his head and he felt that, oh, I can subjugate these Philistines anytime I like, so I can grab any of their women anytime I like. And that bravado led him into destruction. So we need to ensure that not only are we transmitting the righteousness and the love of the things of God and the ways of Christ, but we're also transmitting the wisdom, which is the knowledge applied, to be able to discern and avoid the traps of the enemy. Praise God. So that's what we need to ensure that's getting transmitted to the next generation so that they can manage their gifts, their dieting, their mandate from God, their divine, express, bespoke, unique purpose that God has given them to fulfill here in the earth. So now we're going to look at the story of Samuel. And this is a case where the purpose of God was pretty much revealed or brought about as a result of his mother's supplication to the Lord for him. Now, as we remember, Hannah was barren and she was quite upset because Penina was just harassing her to no end. And she went and she was crying out to the Lord in the temple at Jerusalem. So much so that Eli, the high priest, then thought that she was drunk. But no, the Lord heard her supplication and he heard her promise. He entered into covenant and promised with her that her child that she had would be a son and that son would be dedicated to his service forever. And she followed through along with her husband. And so we see the case where Samuel grew up in the house of God from his tender years so that the will of God for this child manifested. And as a result of Hannah being obedient to her covenant, to her agreement with the Lord, she had many other children. In the case of Samuel, he knew the voice of God from his youngest tenderest years. And it was a case that although Eli wasn't walking with the Lord as he should, although Eli didn't do what he should with his own sons, Hophni and Phineas, to ensure that they were being righteous before the Lord, to ensure that they were reverencing the things of God. Even in his best of state, he was what Samuel had around him. So the Lord used him to help Samuel to understand the voice of God. And of course, the Lord revealed to Samuel what he was going to do to the house of Eli. And it was so much so that the relationship between the Lord and Samuel was that it says in 1 Samuel that God did not allow any of Samuel's word to fall to the ground. Meaning that whatever the Lord revealed to Samuel, it's that that the Lord made come to pass. And Samuel was seen as a good and very accurate prophet of the Lord. And this was that too. Oh, big up Samuel, hey, the, re, 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 the biggest, the baddest, and all of that, prophets and all of that. No. It was so that Samuel could serve the children of Israel. It was so that he could bring their hearts back to God. And that's what we need to remember. You know, sometimes as parents, especially in the case where there were issues with conception and there was a whole lot of fighting and warfare spiritually to bring forth a particular child and then that child starts to become blessed and flowing in the anointing and the gifts of the Lord, it can become deceptive for parents to begin to think that, oh, you know this covenant I made with the Lord with this child, I'm going to overlook it because now instead of serving the Lord, this child is very smart. I want this child to become a doctor. I want this child to become some senator. I want this child to become somebody very, very important. You know, serving in the house of God is too local. 
we need to make sure that we are adhering to whatever promises and pledges that we made before the Lord concerning these children. So, Sawa's case is a case of a covenant child and he was reared in the way of God and in the fear of the Lord and in the knowledge and in relationship with God so then he was able to become exactly who God had sent him to the earth to be and that's what we need to ensure is happening for every child that is born in a Christian family most especially a Christian family not to say that not to say that the promises of God do not obtain over children who are born outside of wedlock like myself. I wasn't born in a Christian family. I wasn't born in wedlock. But yet, God has a purpose upon my life. However, because I wasn't born in the environment to foster it, it took quite a lot for me to enter into what the Lord has called me to be because I didn't have the structure. So, like so I was saying last week, not because you have a Christian home, not because you are your spouse, you know, your husband or your wife, you're serving Christ so wholeheartedly, that doesn't mean that the enemy won't come after your children. No, because he recognizes that these children have one of the best chances to become who Christ has called them to be because they don't have the usual encumbrances of other children who are born in single parent homes, who are born in homes where the word of God and Christ isn't really what is followed. So he seeks very rigorously to take them out from an early age. So you need to be aware of that and ensure that they're growing in their relationship with Christ for themselves so that the promise of God upon their life can manifest. Praise God. And now we're going to consider the case of David, who was born in a family of many sons, but yet as a last son, he was very much overlooked. He was not cared for. And some scholars say the reason behind David not being loved and treated well in his family, as evidenced by the fact that he was the only person taking care of sheep in a family of eight sons, was that he was born in some dubious circumstances, such as there was some illegitimacy surrounding his birth. But we don't know for certain. But David's case is a case where an anointed child is sent to a home, is sent to a family, but they are not only not regarded, they are not taken care of very well, they are ignored, they are ill-treated, they are the proverbial black sheep of the family, they are not seen as anything or anyone of worth. But yet, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, the Lord's purpose, the Lord's express will, the Lord's mandate was upon David and even in the case of children like him what is upon those children to come forth and manifest powerfully but it's a case that they were not fostered, they were not cared for, it was literally they were left to be on their own and it's, it's only the mercies and the grace of God that they're alive, that they entered into what God has called them to be. And if that is you, I don't want you to, thank you Holy Spirit, become bitter, to become hateful because you were never understood, because you were never loved, because you were never cared for, because you were always overlooked, because I want you to know that it doesn't matter how you're treated. It doesn't matter what was that done for you or unto you. The purpose and the will of God will manifest in your life as long as you stay close to Christ. As long as you stay close to Christ and you seek after him and his ways, as long as you're diligent even in those menial positions, even in those oppressive situations, you're still being faithful and you're still doing what you need to be doing despite the fact that the persons you're doing it unto and for, they don't really deserve it. The Lord is watching. He sees you. He knows the true intent of your heart. So don't become bitter. Don't become angry. Don't become hateful. But let just the grace of God, the blood of Jesus, just wash your heart, wash your heart, wash your mind. So that you can, in spite of being put in the buckets of circumstances, you come forth as pure gold. Because the pressure that was meant to kill you will not kill you in the name of Jesus. But just as how a rare diamond is molded in the bowels of the earth, 
under extreme intense pressure and heat that is what will happen with your case as well the intense pressure and heat and the darkness and the obscurity is what is going to allow you to come forth as a rare diamond the rare valuable in fact priceless gem diamond that the lord has called you to be praise god so this is a situation where we see our only Jesus. We just only it's only God why children like in these situations come forth. And as I shared last week, children who have been through not only neglect but sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. You know they were told they would never come out to nothing. They were told that they are like their daddies, like their mommies, and in all the negative sense and um, all of these things. It's difficult to rise above what you have been told so long. But I want you to know that you are not who your relations have said that you are. You are not who anyone has cursed you out and said that you are. You are who God has called you to be. And I want especially for children like these. It's easy for the enemy to tell you that, you know, why did God intervene and give me better parents? Why did God intervene and not let me become abused? Why did God intervene in these many instances where I was being violated? But I do not want you to become bitter and distant from the Lord because that's the enemy's plan. Even as all men and women have free will and all evil and such has happened to you, I want you to know that your testimony of breakthrough your testimony of victory in spite of the things that were done to you in spite of the test battles that you had to face your story will encourage others your story will set others free and you coming into who God has called you to be in spite of all that has been done to you is what will be the deliverance of many persons after you is what will actually shift and change the landscape of your country the landscape of your world, of your society, and you will be a mighty catalyst in the hand of the Lord. But first, you need to surrender to Him. Understand that He's your good, good Father. You may not have had a good father, or you may not have had a good mother, but know that God will never leave you or forsake you. So surrender to Him. To him. And for those of you who observe these situations of children who don't have any good parents around, are persons who love and care for them, any good guardians, please ensure that you are not looking at them and saying, oh, you know, they're taking care of them, so why should I know? Make sure that you are presenting yourself as a vessel to be used by God so that you can even provide comfort, so that you can provide care, so that you can provide deliverance for these children. Because you see when they come forth into who God has called them to be, these are some of the children who have gratitude, who remember the smallest blessings that persons have done to them when they were in their darkest hours. And you're not doing it because you're trying to get, you know, oh, I'm doing it because who knows, they may come out to be a billionaire and I want to bless me. Mm -mm. You're doing it as unto the Lord. Even if those same children that you help, none of them ever come back to you, know that your reward and your blessing for being the hands and the feet of Christ is what is the ultimate. Praise God. True. If the situation of David so like your case, don't give up. Push through. Fight the good fight of faith. Do not compromise your morals. Do not compromise even the purpose of God and the instructions of God upon your life. Don't compromise. Hold on to Christ. If you don't know him, come into relationship with him. Because, you see, that is case where you have all of these warfare, spiritual and natural, that you need to fight. You need the strong man, the mighty man on your side, even Jesus Christ. So come into relationship with Christ so that his purpose upon your life can manifest. And so that you can be a blessing to your generations and the ones to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now we're going to go into the more cautionary tales. And we're going to look at two sons of David, Ammon and Absalom. Oh. So Ammon was one of David's sons, and he had his sister Tamar, who was like his half-sister, but in our grand scheme of things, I still his sister. However, Ammon was influenced by an evil friend or an evil cousin 
who, when he realized that Abad had this unhealthy sexual attraction to his sister, he didn't say to Abad, no man, you can't do that to your sister, how you want to go with her? He instead gave Abad details in terms of how to fool David into sending Tamar to his house to make food for him so that he could rape her. And of course that was done and it was horrible. Horrific. Now this is the scenario where, of course, you have children being born into privilege, children being born into the best circumstances, but parents aren't being vigilant in ensuring that the persons around them are godly. And I have a, um, a story time, which I get have to be careful how I share this story time because these are real persons. So, like I said, I grew up in Darius and West Valley with my mother and a number of my relatives were around from my mother's side. So there was this relative who my mother would constantly say to her in relation to her little daughter, which was our first child, first daughter, do not send the little girl to this young man's house to go for things. Well, this young man was related to the relative through marriage. My mother kept saying, I don't feel right about you sending her around there. I don't feel right about you sending her to be watching TV in his house because he had cable and all of them things. You know, poor people with me. So, you know, if people have things, the tendency if you don't raise your children, right, and tight or close to you, is that you just left them for up and up. So he had cable, he was working in full-time official employment and all of that. But my mother did just sense that he was possessed of the spirit of perversion. Of course, this relative feel like say, she do her thing better than anybody else. And she was one of those persons who, you know, love money, love things, love for people, give them, give them, give them. That's the other thing. We need to raise children not to be licky, licky and yabby, yabby. In... For those of you who are not Jamaicans, licky licky and yabby yabby just means be greedy, grasping and willing to accept things without questioning it to one's own detriment, right? So, this continued until eventually, the unthinkable happened. <sighs> yeah, so the child was groomed sexually and introduced to sex from an early age and then unfortunately began it's not like we had any evidence that it was done but you could sense from as a result of her being around him around him around him that her mannerism around him was like that you know said like the plague and so forth was that you know said uh, the mother kept saying to the relative stop 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 you know you know say whatever but you know in jamaican context you can only cause the people, you can't force them. So then this child became sexualized and um, became promiscuous. Like I said, one of the side effects of sexual abuse is promiscuity. It could also be that they go the other extreme and they just really hate men and, you know, even say, well, we're going to see sexual attraction and like that. So because it was not dealt with, it led to promiscuity in that child and of course a complete derailment of her life and who God has called her to be but I still do pray for that relative that, and her children that she has because I can see where because of her laxity in not being a strong parent in not teaching them righteous living you know how they say because it was not taught to her so her dysfunction, she carried it down to her lineage. It's being replicated as well. So that's a matter of praying and fasting, in all honesty. So it's, so it's so, important that we're careful about who we allow our own children. Be careful with those sleepovers. Be careful with those, you know, oh, we're going to spend holiday, whichever, whichever, whichever family. Because a lot of children have been violated as a result of parents sending them away for holidays. Because you may be very strict with who you allow around your children, but when you send them off out of your sight, especially when they're quite young and they can't really explain or even in some cases defend themselves against a predator, then it is a situation where way down, years down the line, that is when you realize what so uncle, so and so, cousin, auntie, whoever 
has been doing to your child. And by that time, it late, it don't happen. So I tend to be like, you know what? Just raise your pity them to yourself. Raise your children yourself. Raise them very open to tell you every single thing that is done and said to them regardless of what someone says. Because a lot of these predators love to tell the children that they're going to kill them or kill their family and stuff like that. So we just have to be very vigilant and be led by the Spirit of God in all things. Especially in relation to this matter of child rearing. Because it's not just a matter of, oh, you're having children and, oh, you know, you have so many sons, so many daughters. You send them to school, they have degrees and they have big job and they drive big car and they, they have a big house and all they buy. No! What about the purpose of God upon their lives? Are they living out their purpose? Have they become who Christ has called them to be or have they become who you determined in your heart that they're going to be? Because in all honesty, regardless of the body and the wealth and the power that they have, if they're not walking in their unique purpose, if they're not walking according to who God has called them to be, none of these things matter. Because at the end of the day, when God call all of us before the judgment seat, we will have to give a court for what he has told us to do, whether or not we did it, and for who he has put into our care, whether or not we took care of those persons and fostered them into becoming who he has called them to be. So let us be good stewards, including not just good stewards of our finances and good stewards of the material blessings that God has given us, but good stewards of our children that the Lord has entrusted into our care. Now we're going to look at the case of Absalom and this is a case of parental neglect that led to insurrection and just totally tore apart the family. So Absalom, he's upset that his sister Tamar has been violated by their half-brother Ammon and David did not come to Tamar's defense and say, Amon, you're wrong and punish him or nothing like that. He just basically said to Tamar, you know what? Oh, Which just means, don't cry. All David was said was, hush, never mind. Just take it and go on. We can't really bother the family too much. And that is in line with what I was discussing last week about the lackadaisical attitude towards sexual assault of females. And males as well. It's sort of like, well, because sex, I'm going to do. It's not sex. It's rape. It's violation. It was done against a person's will. It's, <sighs> it's not just an attack against their womanhood, against their bodies, but also against their souls, against their minds, against everything that they are, their identities. So we should never look at sexual assault in a cavalier attitude like, oh, just deal with it. No, these are things that need to be dealt with. Be that you are not hiding it or brushing it under the carpet, but you are bringing it to the fore who needs to get prosecuted. Get prosecuted, whether or not they're in the church, outside the church, or whatever level in the church. Or regardless of what kind of family you have, whether lower class, upper class, middle class, stratosphere class, middle know. Make sure that all of these sexual assaults are being reported and are being prosecuted regardless of who it is. Alright? So, David now, he decides I'm not know. And this made Amon feel like, yeah, whatever. So Amon goes about his business and doing life. And of course, we have Absalom, you know, who is looking at David say. So you're not going to do anything, you're not going to do anything. He realizes that his father isn't going to do anything against Amnon. He decides to take matters into his own hands. He decided to kill Amnon and he ran away. And David even then was like, oh, it is sad. David is taking this thing cavalier and I think that is a message to all of us. Whenever we see the warning signs, make sure that we're not overlooking it because that is just setting ourselves up and our families up for greater destruction and desolation. So he was ignoring it. 
eventually through different schemes and so forth Absalom is brought back into the palace but the point is as much as David had forgiven Absalom Absalom was still upset because Absalom felt like David was not regarding him as his true son Absalom felt like David had neglected him and hadn't fulfilled his parental duties towards him so Absalom became bitter Absalom became a viper pretty much in his father's court and he began to pull person's hearts away from his father. He began to undermine his father's rule. And unfortunately, we have these adversarial, hallelujah, these adversarial relationships where they should not be in families, wherein instead of sons preserving the legacy of their fathers, they are then trying to tear it down and destroy it. Instead of daughters, working in harmony with mothers because of things that were done and things that were not done and injustices that were allowed to continue and nothing was done the result is an acrimonious a bitter a hateful relationship between them instead of the relationship that God intended and people of God we cannot see when these young people or even children begin to manifest these mannerisms and you know you know you know they are heart of heart of hearts that there are things that were not resolved there are things that you overlooked there are things that you didn't deal with there are things that you made them feel less than and you said no whatever deal with it and no the fowls are coming home to roost no the consequences are coming to you where you gonna do if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do the foundation was not at all set for righteous godly lineage to ensue so now this was a case where Absalom eventually tried to overthrow David and we can say well the whole battle of Absalom and Abraham and Aunt Tamar and all of these things sprang from the situation with Bathsheba when David killed Uriah and took Bathsheba as his wife and of course this was a part of the judgment of God the destabilization of his own family because he gave the enemy leeway into his house and we cannot become lackadaisical when unfortunately things are kicking off in our families and things are kicking off among our children and then we don't do nothing at all even if you can't do something in the natural you can't do something in the spiritual sense you can't fast and pray you can't intercede but of course you have to first make sure that you're coming to the Lord in repentance because there were sins that were done there were injustices that were allowed to go forward because you wanted an easy life because you wanted things to be easy and you need to repent of all of these things so that they know when you're supplicating they know when you're fasting and praying concerning the situation right now concerning the deliverance of these children that it can come forth unfortunately in the case of David and Absalom Absalom died and he died in the prime of his youth without having any children and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for those of you who are going through these intense battles with your children as a result of things that were done in their childhood or were not done in their childhood or even if you did all that you could but you're going through intense spiritual and physical warfare over your children in Jesus name what happened to Absalom will not obtain in your case but they will be delivered set free and loose by the power in the blood of Jesus and the authority in the name of Jesus so that they can become who Christ has called them to be. Amen. So another story that I want to share with you is the story of the daughters of Zolophedad. I know, I probably mispronounced his name. Zolophedad? <laughs> anyway, so these were the daughters of a man who was among the children of Israel in the whole exodus from Egypt into the promised land who he died without sons and Moses was now sharing up the lands beyond Jordan before they crossed over Jordan led by Joshua and they decided that hey our father had no sons but we should have a part of this possession in Israel we know from biblical times that the line of succession came through the patriarchal line meaning that fathers would give to sons and sons would give to their sons and that's how property was transmitted but in the case of the daughters of Zelophehad the Lord told Moses to go ahead and give them a portion in their father's house in their father's tribe but the condition just for the interest of peace and so that other tribes would have then you know, infringe it to the territory that belonged to their tribe, they had to marry within their tribe. But the point is, they were allowed to possess land in their own rights. 
as much as we are in the body of Christ, and you know, we preach the whole humility aspect and all of that, which is very important, we need to ensure that we're raising our children to recognize who they are and who they are in Christ, and that they are not afraid to express what is upon their heart. They're not afraid to go after that which belongs to them. They're not afraid to become who God has called them to be. And the daughters of Zemephinad could have been like, oh, society says that we're just women. So I guess <laughs> we'll just let it go by as much as we see land being sheared and not ask our own, right? But they were fearless. And kudos to Zemephinad. He reared daughters who were steadfast, even in a highly patriarchal culture. They were doing the thing and they were like, yeah, they were outspoken. So these were women of substance and of worth. So regardless of the gender of our children, we need to ensure that we're rearing them, not just in the knowledge and in the fear of Christ and the things of Christ, but also to be able to function well in society, to be able to hold their own so that the purpose of God, the mandate of God upon their lives will manifest and they will not miss out on anything that God has intended them to possess in this time. They will not miss out on anything that God is calling them to do and to excel in in this time. So now I want to speak to those parents or guardians who are parenting in less than ideal situations. Like because I said before, I was raised in a single parent home. It was just pretty much my mother and I, she was also taking care of her father, so that's my maternal grandfather, but he was quite old, so I didn't really have a father figure. One right. of the things that I remember quite clearly from growing up with an older mother, which praise God, I'm happy that the Lord allowed me to be born to her when she was older, wiser, although the resources weren't there, but she was a more mellow lady. <laughs> Not that I wanted to get away with things because she didn't make me get away with stuff, contrary to what persons may believe. But she was in the time of life where she could share wisdom, she could share truth with me. And I'm very grateful to God that he allowed me to be born to her at that phase of her life, when she was that kind of parent. I kept saying to her, why weren't you ever interested in having another relationship, in trying to see if you could get married, you know, now that you are in the church. And she was like, I realized the mistakes that I made rearing your older siblings and I can't go back and change things up because things done gone through. But I decided that with this class one, which is me, I would do things differently. I would be very clear to you about things. I wouldn't hide anything. I would make everything open. So I was sort of like her last ditch attempt at parenting well, which by the grace of God, she did a very good job. As well, she, she said, I don't want to have a man coming in now. She was said, more than likely, me taking up a man now, he would decide that he's going to be bothering you and I don't want anything like that to happen. So, you know, my mother decided to remain single because she was in her 40s, her 50s when I was in my childhood, becoming a teenager. That was how her years were lined up. And she decided to, you know what, I'm going to stay single, serve Jesus, I just raised this one like last child. And I'm very grateful to her for that sacrifice. I'm really grateful. I'm very sorry that she's not here to eat any of the fruit of her labor, but the Lord knows best. See, so my mother was a wise woman. I would notice that mothers would be in relationship with these men and they're living apart. So the mother is living, single mother living with her children. She, in a this relationship, or probably this situation she put this man over here, and she decides that she's going to send her child male and female to the man's house for money and all of these things and my mother would always say you know this is how you opened up the way for the for these children to be violated because it's not like you're in a solid relationship with this man and you're sending your little girl especially to him to get money you are then putting her in the mindset that to associate every relationship that she enters with you must be getting something from him and this man who is this big trunk tone man who is likely highly perverted is going to decide that oh he's sleeping with the mother but he's going to take the daughter as brata or extras as well 
and this is how you have sexual abuse happening to the little children and they become sexualized and then their lives and their destinies are forever perverted so that was one of our pet peeves women sending their little girls especially to their boyfriends or them man feel get money get things and all of this stuff and she really hated that so i just thought to share that you know don't do it don't do it if you're in that situation don't do it it's so important that we are aware of who is in our house we are aware of who god has called each child to be and of course their persona in the kingdom of christ will be evidence in their area of giftings in their area of what they do you know well. that it's also quite popular that especially in developing countries that the emphasis is on education doing well getting good grades and all of that and yes i was a very good student yes i did very well in school however that's not the only thing you need to also pay attention and build the esteem of children who don't do well in school who do well in the arts who do well in crafts who do well doing things with their hands who do well in performing you know, and everybody are going to be professor. So that everybody are going to get A's. You understand? So it's important that we are understanding that we know who each child is called to be. And you'll have an understanding of that based on their areas of gifting, based on what they do very well. What they do that, you look at it and you say, you know what? You're really unique, you know. The feel said that's a really a gift. And everybody would come and say, oh, she can't do here. Goody is our gift. Don't ever, if you have multiple children, put down the ones who don't do well academically because everybody is seeing the A's, the grade ones, the whatevers and all of those things of your more academically inclined child. Don't put down any child. Make sure that you're not going to diss the person who is doing well academically. No, you're going to encourage them and let them continue in that area. But also don't neglect the ones who aren't the scholars, because God has a purpose on their life, they can still come out and excel. In some cases, even higher than one, them who did have all of the education. Yo, you see, in this God's economy, you see, in God's kingdom, there is no telling who can become what in the future. So make sure that you are fostering each child to the best of your ability in accordance with the revelation of the Holy Spirit of God and so that you can provide the conditions for them to bloom, for them to blossom, for them to grow and manifest and become who Christ has called them to be. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this word that has gone forth, even as you intended it, Father Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray, dear God, that even parents, even guardians, Anyone who comes across this message, Lord, that it will even resonate with them in the name of Jesus. It will even germinate in their souls, in their spirits, and even change their outlook on life. Even change the way how they see children, even their own children, Almighty God, even the children, Almighty Jesus Christ, that you have entrusted into their care, regardless of whether they are parents, guardians, or even teachers or other caregivers in the name of Jesus. I pray, Almighty Jesus Christ, that you will give even wisdom, dear Jesus Christ, unto these parents, these guardians, these caregivers, Lord Jesus Christ, so that they'll be able, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, to discern who you have called each child that you put in their path to become. How they can even, Lord Jesus Christ, be your hands and your feet, Lord Jesus, to serve these children in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, I pray, dear Jesus Christ, that you will even help them, dear Jesus, to even do things the way how you want it to be done and that according to their intellect, according to what they believe to be right, according to what their own carnal desires and wishes and aspirations were. Almighty Jesus Christ. So Father God, I pray dear God for these parents, Almighty Jesus Christ, whom certain things have not happened in their lives and they believe will never happen. So that they seek their Jesus Christ to impose their vision and their dreams upon their children and levy it upon them and tell them that they have to manifest it. Father Lord Jesus Christ, we break that spirit in the name of Jesus. Even that spirit of our new control and witchcraft in the name of Jesus, we break it by the blood of Jesus. Father Lord Jesus Christ, I will declare, I will declare that each child 
in such hopes of mighty Jesus Christ. They will become who you have called them to be in the name of Jesus. Father Lord Jesus Christ, I pray dear Jesus for those children who are neglected, who have been neglected, who are even abused of mighty Jesus Christ, who are overlooked, who are not loved, who are not cared for, Lord Jesus. I pray dear God that you go forth, dear God, and strengthen their hearts. I pray dear God for your peace that passes all understanding to envelop them right now. I pray dear God for your love, Lord Jesus Christ. Your amazingly deep and constant love, Almighty Jesus Christ. We'll even just envelop them, Almighty God. We'll even just seek into the very depths of their souls in the name of Jesus. Help them, dear God, to know that they are loved. Help them, dear God, to know their father. That even if they never had a good father in this earth, that you are the ultimate father. You are the good, good father. And that's who you are and who you'll always be in the name of Jesus. I pray, dear Jesus Christ, even for even those children who are born in the circumstances that on the outside look ideal, who are even born in the house of God in the name of Jesus, who are even born pretty much upon your altar, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, dear God that their parents, hallelujah, will not become lackadaisical, will not become lapsed in their duties and obligations towards these children, but their eyes will be sharpened by your Holy Spirit. Their eyes and their discernment will be sharpened so that they will be able to protect and safeguard these children's destinies in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, dear God, even for the teenagers, dear God, Almighty Jesus Christ, when they're in this stage where they're not sure of who they are, Lord Jesus, that you will even, Lord God, for those of them who know you, that they'll be steadfast in you in the name of Jesus, that they'll be unashamed of their identities in Christ, and that they will even, dear God, grow into mighty men and women of God. Who are able to do great exploits in your kingdom to your glory in the name of Jesus and for their good and the good of others in the name of Jesus. Father Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for the young adults, Almighty Jesus Christ, who they have gone through many things, dear God, or they're still, dear Jesus Christ, that's certain of their purpose and who you have called them to be. Father God, I pray, dear Lord, that you draw them into closer communion with you. And even those who are in the middle age, dear God, or at any age, Father Jesus Christ, and they're not sure of what their purpose is in you. I pray, dear God, you draw them into closer communion with you. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that they will build their relationship in you in the name of Jesus so that they'll be able to deserve what your heart is towards them, so that they'll be able to deserve, Lord Jesus Christ, all of what you have put inside them and that you're waiting for them to pull out and to begin to multiply so that they can bless their generation, so that they can bless their world, so that they can even effect good and lasting changes in their spheres of influence in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, dear God, that you leave a blessed appearance, bless the guardians of Almighty God, bless the caregivers, so that Almighty Jesus Christ, they will even be steadfast in their duties, be steadfast, Lord Jesus Christ, in molding these young lives, these young minds, these children, to become who you have called them to be in the name of Jesus. I pray, dear God, that you leave a bless and provide for orphanages, dear God, and even places of refuge for children and adults in the name of Jesus. Father Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, dear God, that you help us, Father Lord, in our own small ways to be your hands and your feet in the name of Jesus, to be your mouthpieces in the earth in the name of Jesus, so that, Almighty God, your will for each child that you send to this earth will manifest and will manifest powerfully in the earth in the name of Jesus. Father Lord Jesus Christ, we cover all families of their blood in the name of Jesus. Every representative of a family that watches this video. I cover their families and their blood and protection and preservation. I pray their God for your divine provision upon their whole soul in the name of Jesus. And Father God, if they don't know your mighty God, I pray their God that you reveal yourself to them so that they will even repent and be baptized in your name, Lord Jesus Christ, and be filled with the power of your Holy Spirit, even like Christ in Acts 2, 38 and 39 in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for their continued grace in the name of Jesus. There continues strength and peace in you in the name of Jesus. And Father, Lord Jesus Christ, whatever I fail of asking, dear God, grant it unto me, unto your people, and unto every single person who watches this video. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. So, I thank you so, so, so much. Yes, it's another long video. I don't know, people of God. <sighs> I'm just doing as the Lord needs me to do, right? With these weekly videos. Because, you know, I pray 
that just in a video but i pray even before that the will of god will manifest so if the will of god manifests in a rather long video i just have to go along i just be obedient to christ and share that video without cutting out that which he wants me to share i know that your hearts have been blessed and you're encouraged and you're empowered and now you're going to make sure that you are a good steward of every child that the lord puts into your care whether in your capacity as a parent whether in your capacity as a guardian whether in your capacity of a caregiver whether professional or otherwise you are going to be good stewards of who the lord has put into your hands and you will even foster those children or that child to become exactly who the Lord has called them to be. Now make sure that you're thumbsing up these videos. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, 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 up. Yes, like these videos. It just signals to YouTube to share my videos as recommendations so that other persons can be blessed. So make sure that you're liking the videos. Please feel free to leave your comments below. I like comments, I respond to these comments, so leave them all right and also make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so for christ click the notification bell so that you will know just when i upload a new video to this channel so until we meet again next week may his blessings peace and wisdom be upon you all bye bye